Hi, I'm Bree Sheldon, and I am Queer Games. I'm making this video because June is Pride Month, which is when we recognize the adversity that queer people face and overcome, marked especially by remembering the Stonewall riots. When police raided a bar where queer people were gathered, trans people, gay and lesbian people, all kinds of people, including drag queens and all that stuff, the patience of queer New Yorkers kind of ran out. The police were being invasive and violating people's rights. Martha P. Johnson, who is a black trans sex worker, is credited with initiating the riot as a response to the police aggression. A number of other black people and people of color headed up the rejection of this prejudice and power. This was alongside a number of queer resistors. Because of that, because we fought against something that was so oppressive after, you know, years that had led up to the Stonewall riot, that's why pride matters. Queer people have been in states of persecution and facing great prejudice for the entire time we've been here, which has been an incredibly long time. The thing is, with police power and government power and the oppression that we face and microaggressions that we face every day, queer people are important. And yet we are underappreciated, we are harmed, we are hurt. In the gaming community, there's especially a large amount of homophobia and queerphobia, transphobia, abuse of people who are simply just trying to be themselves and live. And we use games to express ourselves, right? That's, that's part of the thing with games, especially when you design them, but also when you play them. You have so much freedom to say how the world works for queer people. Instead of just looking at what we have now. The reality is that queerness inside and outside of games is important to me, and it's important and valuable to the world. And that's why I think that recognizing queer creators in games and queer gamers and just people who enjoy the medium who don't consider themselves to be gamers, they all matter and they should all be recognized. And that's basically the reason why I wanted to do this video. It's Pride Month. This is an important thing. We should recognize people. And it also gives me an opportunity to explain who I am in regards to my queerness. Considering I am a gamer and have been for a really long time, I think that it was something important to me to latch on to and say, this is something we need to talk about. This isn't so much to start a dialogue as it is to start a wave of people talking about themselves and about what they care about and what games mean to them and allow people to see the diversity of games. The video here that I'm doing will include a series of questions that I wrote, um, and I'll copy you those in the description below. If you're a queer gamer, a queer person who plays games, a queer designer, please consider answering them in your favorite format, whether that's a video or a blog post or social media. And if you could hashtag it, I am queer games, uh, as it's on the screen, I would really appreciate it. I'd love to hear your stories and feel free to respond to this and link them um, or tag me on social media. I am at BreeCS, that's B-R-I-E-C-S, at um, Twitter and Mastodon under Dice Camp, that's Dice.Camp, Bree Sheldon on Google+, and you can find me in a whole bunch of places, basically. And I'd love to hear from you and know a little bit about you through these questions. Again, that is I am queer games is the hashtag. I will be responding to the questions here and copying my responses into the description below. This post is supported by my Patreon at patreon.com slash BreeCS. I'm doing this because it's part of my community work and also because it's a big part of my recognition and outreach towards diverse creators. Thank you so much for watching. Here we go. Question number one, who are you? I am Bree Sheldon. I am a formal game designer. I'm a journalist and an editor. 
I run a site called Thoughty, where I talk about game design and theory and do interviews. This is supported by my Patreon that I mentioned earlier, but it's patreon.com slash breecs. I'm also a graduate of leadership studies and a creator of Leading with Class, which is a web show that uses games to teach leadership theory and practice, and it's supported by patreon.com slash leading with class. Question two, what are your pronouns? I use either they, them, or he, him, whichever is easier and makes more sense at the time. Question three, what's your queer in a few words? I'm gender fluid, non-binary masculine, queer in orientation. Question four, what are your intersections and chosen labels? On the marginalized side, I'm disabled and have some mental health stuff. For privileges, I'm white, well-educated, and married to a cisgender man with a decent paying job and I live in a nice neighborhood. On the fun end, I'm polyamorous, a gamer, and an artist. Question five. What's your gender, or lack thereof, and what does it mean to you? I describe my gender as gender-fluid, non-binary masculine, because my gender identity, the inside part of me, fluctuates between non-binary androgynous and non-binary masculine, where I'm never really a man at any point, but I do have some masculinity to myself. I call myself a boy a lot because the soft masculinity that I associate with boyness is basically where I am a lot of the time. My gender is really important to me. I struggled with it for around 24 years before coming out on a small scale, and 26 before I told my family. It's who I am, and I love to live with it freely. Question number six. What's your orientation, and what does it mean to you? I'm queer, and I call myself queer because it makes the most sense to me. Being a fluid person and being non-cisgender, I fluctuate a lot on how I define my relationships, but basically, I'm attracted to people of pretty much every gender. My attraction is different with different people, sometimes romantic, sometimes sexual, sometimes both, and I also have a lot of platonic attraction. It's all important to me. I feel a lot of feelings, and they find homes in many different places. Question number seven. How do you present yourself, and how do you want to present yourself, including clothes, makeup, body mods, and anything else? My ideal presentation is moving between soft masculine and edgy androgyny, but both with boobs. I like my boobs, and I hate that having them decreases my masculinity and my androgyny. I wish that I could have those things and still have boobs. And still wear makeup. I like wearing masculine or unisex clothes. Like, I could live in jeans, ball caps, and a t-shirt. But I super did get in wear those alongside, like, a low-cut top and stuff like that. It suits me. I'm not planning on getting any further body mods than my piercings at tattoos, except more tattoos. Gender affirmation and hormones aren't what will make me whole. From what I know. Question eight. What's this got to do with games? Gender, queerness, pride. Games have a good dose of queerness, just in them already, when you realize how easily you can put on another gender and orientation and have the identity you perform for a session, event, or campaign. If you think you've never touched queerness, Think of how many times you've played a character of a different gender or who is attracted to a gender you aren't. That doesn't make you queer, but it shows how you can connect those things. Gender and orientation are so tied to our experiences at the table because they're tied to our real lives. Mechanics and settings in games can encourage queerness, and safe environments encourage engagement with identity questions. When we're playing a game, it's a safety buffer. It's a way to explore with training wheels, and when the wheels come off, we can tell stories we want to be told, since good media for us is so hard to find. We must tell our own stories. We can make them rich and interactive for queer and not queer people alike. It's an amazing medium to dig into both queer reality and queer fantasy. And it gives us a unique power to frame the mechanics of the worlds we play in when we design queer games. How we handle violence, how we handle sex, how we handle stigma. The control it gives us to realize queerness is really important. Question 9. 
When do you remember being queer in game the earliest? What does it tell you about games and queerness? Honestly, it started back whenever I was playing Harry Potter text-based roleplay when I was in my early teens. I started playing androgynous characters, very clumsily, and exploring who my characters could be attracted to. In my mid-teens, I played some androgynous characters in D&Ds and flirted with the idea of queer characters like lesbians and gay men, and even pansexuality at one point. But it was not well executed. We need games that support queerness and identity questioning, where it's okay to explore these things and encourage to explore them and down to support in texts of games and in the community. Games can't hold these spaces alone. They need support from those making the games and those playing them who know about queer culture and life. Question 10. What can cis straight people do to help? Listen. Look at your life. Look at your choices. If you fucked up, apologize and don't do it again. Remember that kink isn't inherently queer. Donate money and time where you can. Honor our history. Hire queer creators. Support sex workers. Don't write about us without doing research and consulting us. Use people's proper pronouns. Be better than you have ever been. Share a message with other queer gamers, both out and not, about the future. Things are a hot damn mess right now, but we can make it through. Pride Month is a big deal, but it's not the only month of the year that we need to be raising our voices supporting each other, and keep moving forward. No queer person is alone in their queerness. We can find ways to work together. We need to recognize black queer people, queer people of color, trans and non-binary people, bisexual and pansexual people, queer Jewish and Muslim people, and asexual and aromantic people. Don't forget that sex workers, disabled people, and people with mental illnesses are sometimes queer people too. We need to remember that we're in this together. Don't let the pressure from privilege and all of those bigoted people crush you. And if you're still keeping private, that's okay. We'll be here when you're ready. For some final thoughts. I'm doing this because I want to see queer people and games be recognized and welcome them, as well as talk about why these things are important. I want to highlight the diversity in games that so often is brushed under the rug. I also want to open up the floor for queer voices. If I can do that for even one person, just make one person be heard, Yeah, I like that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that you'll join me in the hashtag IamQueerGames question and response. I would love to hear from you if you're a queer creator, queer gamer, queer person who plays games. Thank you so much. This post is supported by patreon.com slash BCS patrons like you. Please feel free to support my work there or donate through the donation links in the description. Check out more of my work at breecs.com.